It's fall, so I know you're thinking about fertility on your farm, but don't just think about N, P, and K. It's super important to take a look at soil pH, the secondary nutrients, and micronutrients, including our topic today, which is zinc. So today with zinc, we're gonna talk about why it's so important and what kind of levels you should look for in your soil. First of all, when Brian said we wanna talk about looking at zinc, I've seen so many soil samples that have N, P, K, maybe the secondary nutrients, and zinc. And that's the only micronutrient that was tested for. I don't want to mislead you today and have you thinking, you know what, Brian and Darren said, well, I just have to test for zinc. That's gonna be the most important micro. Hey, it may be the most important micro for you on your soil, but you do need to do a complete analysis and look at all the different micros. We see some interactions between nutrients, whether it's micronutrients or also micronutrients with some of these primary nutrients. Like today, we're talking about zinc, and one of the big primary nutrients we look at is phosphorus. And when we have a high amount of phosphorus out in soils, adequate levels of zinc become really critical for you. All right, before we go through what kind of levels you should have for phosphorus and zinc and all that. Let's talk about the importance of zinc in plants. It actually is involved in many of the different functions in the plant. Two specifically that I want to mention today have had a lot of impact on our own farm that I look at. One is cold tolerance and the other one is moisture absorption. So when you think about utilizing moisture inside that plant, zinc kind of regulates a lot of that. So when we think about a drought year, for example, or maybe even a super wet year, zinc is absolutely playing a big role in that plant. All right, in terms of the cold tolerance, yes, like on our farm, we're not raising a whole lot of winter crops, but for the winter crops that we do, whether that's rye or wheat or something else, if you don't have proper levels of zinc in that plant, well, it's not gonna be able to withstand the cold nearly as well. One other thing when Brian talks about these functions is you might be thinking, well, when do I need to apply the zinc? You need to have zinc in that crop all through the season. So you need good availability of zinc early in the season, which many farmers try to accomplish with a pop-up or even a two-by-two -two type placement. But you also need good levels in your soil so you can access that zinc throughout the season. You're going to need to take zinc in because once it's in the plant, it really locks into the tissue that it gets in so you don't see a whole lot of movement once it's in the plant. So if the lower leaves use up the zinc that you've got and then you run out of zinc later, you'll see it show up at the top of the plant with striping on the leaves. This can often be misdiagnosed because there's a number of different nutrients that can show deficiencies similar to what zinc deficiency will look like, but it's, it is important that you know we will need a good dose of zinc all throughout the season. So Darren mentioned how zinc is non-mobile in the plant. Zinc is also immobile in the soil. When you think about zinc in terms of application, you might be saying, well, I'll just broadcast some out there. Okay, that's fine, but if you don't do any tillage, it's literally going to lay on the soil surface and maybe move down, I don't know, a tenth of an inch per year, something like that, in a lot of soils. It's kind of like phosphorus. When you think about phosphorus, it doesn't move just like zinc doesn't. So with zinc, one of the things that you want to do when you apply it is be very careful about where you place it. If you put it on the soil surface and don't till it in, not only do you have to worry that number one, it's not gonna get into the plant, but number two, just like with phosphorus, if you lay it on the soil surface, you could lose it to erosion. When that soil moves, the phosphorus and the zinc go along with it. So that's why like even on our farm, We've traditionally had a lot of issues with zinc deficiencies right on the side hills. Everything else was fine, but the side hills were really short. So that's probably what I would suggest on your farm for the very first place you look for a zinc deficiency. The other thing, Brian, that's really played into zinc deficiency is every crop you plant is going to need some zinc. Many farmers that I talk to are saying, well, my zinc program is, I put some zinc in furrow on my corn, I'm using a quart of zinc, I'm delivering about two tenths of a pound of zinc out there, my corn crop needs somewhere around two tenths of a pound of zinc, so I think I'm doing pretty good. My follow-up question is to ask the farmer, well, what's your rotation? Are you rotating with soybeans? Are you rotating with soybeans and wheat? Uh, all those crops are going to need zinc as well. And farmers say, oh, well, man, I was putting it in furrow in corn. I, I was worried about putting anything in furrow on my soybeans, so I just wasn't putting any out there. And if you're not putting it out on those other crops, you may be meeting the needs of that corn crop for this year. But for your soybeans and your wheat, if you're not putting it out there, you're going backwards on a two or three year rotation. Earlier, Darren mentioned phosphorus and zinc and how those two things kind of tie together, and they absolutely do. If you have too much phosphorus compared to your zinc, 
you're going to have a real problem. But the reverse is also true. If there's too much zinc in relation to your phosphorus, you've got an issue. So what is the right balance? Honestly, I don't know what the exact number is, but I know what we're usually shooting for is somewhere around 10 to 1, maybe 8 to 1, in terms of a P1 phosphorus versus a zinc parts per million. So if I look at those two things and I'm in the 8 to 1 to 10 to 1 range, great. Okay, so think about that for a minute. If you had 50 parts per million of P1 phosphorus, that would be a good level for your soil. All right, that means you got to have five parts per million of zinc. On our farm, we've actually, in some cases, overdone it. Uh, a couple of spreader issues that we had and made some mistakes. And in a couple of cases, we just decided, hey, we're going to put a whole bunch of zinc on there. And we've actually had issues with that where we've been able to show, hey, when we do improve our phosphorus levels now, boy, we're getting more yield uptake. So there is a, a definite balance there, a definite ratio. Again, I don't know exactly what it is, but shoot for something like 8 to 1 to 10 to 1 on your farm. And by the way, when we talk about the zinc application overall, zinc sulfate is super cheap. So if you're at a half part per million today and you want to get to five, go zinc sulfate. Otherwise, if you just want to feed the plant for this year, liquid with the planter is a great way to go. And in fact, using at least a little bit of liquid, even in addition to a dry zinc sulfate program, is probably a pretty good idea just to make sure that you've got that available zinc really early in the year. And many of the growers that are raising 300 plus bushel corn per acre are putting zinc out in multiple sites because, let's face it, we're going to need a lot of zinc, number one. But the other thing, as Brian mentioned before, it doesn't move much in soil. So if you've got it sitting out there in your soil profile in several different places, like for example, say you did put some in furrow or in a two by two, well, what happens on a dry year? The top couple of inches dry out pretty quickly. So you'd be really well served having some a little deeper in your soil with those broad cast applications of zinc sulfate, the best thing you could do for the zinc would be to do some tillage to move it down deeper in the soil so it's available when it gets drier later in the season. Well, once again, zinc is incredibly important for many different things in the plant. Just make sure you have a good level in your soil. You keep testing that plant later on in the year, tissue analysis, maybe doing some foliar feeding. And always remember that zinc is immobile in the plant and it's pretty immobile in soil. So make sure you're placing it where you need it. Well, one other thing you don't need any place is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 